Hello there. I'm talking again to you about a continuation of the last thing that I talked online about, which is uh, the war. <laughs> well, let me just say uh, briefly that um, I want to talk about what it is to be the minority, because it seems like I'm always in the minority a lot, you know, as far as my opinions and as far as my type of uh, politics and my type of philosophy and a lot of my beliefs seem to be very much minority opinions. And, and I don't go around trying to be contrary to people and what they believe and what they say. I'm, that's not what I'm trying to do. I, I every so often, believe it or not, uh, reassess my positions so that whenever I'm holding some strong opinion, I like to go and really look at the other side's opinion and try to act like and assume like I have their same opinion. And I seem to come up a lot of times with the same conclusions that I came up with before. I sometimes change a little bit too. I have changed. It becomes more confusing as I get older what the truth is. But generally speaking, most often I follow the same line of thinking that I followed before. And, and I don't know if this is because, you know, I have my background that I lived and it's the information that's at my disposal or if it's because I'm emotionally made up a certain way or I logically align my emotions with my feelings. I mean, my thoughts and my emotions logically line up. That's probably what it is. But Sometimes I do see there's some incredible ignorance out there among the populations. And, and some of those ignorances are taught to them in the media. And you talk with these people that listen to certain uh, news outlets and radio outlets, and it's like you can't get past certain information with them. It's they're misinformed. And how do you say that, you know, you're misinformed? I mean, because if I tell you, for example, that um, the people in the United States are in a democratic republic, and they say that that's not the same thing as being democratic, or it's not a democracy. I say, yeah, dem I had this conversation with somebody not too long ago. They said it's not a democracy; it's a democratic republic. So yeah, that's a type of running way of running democracies. You know what they seem to want is a, a direct democracy, straight democracy, which you know, what we seem to have an argument about a lot of times is the definition of these words. People get in these gigantic arguments about what is conservative, what is liberal, what is communism, what is capitalism, what is socialism. And, and some of these arguments, I think, start from how they define the words. And some people, you know, they're saying democracy. And I'm saying democracy, too. And they're talking about something completely different than I'm talking about because we don't agree on the definitions. So that's just a, something that you should clear up. And, and so when I talk about democracy, there's two ways of looking at it. There's, of course, direct democracy, which exists in very few places in the world, because what de direct democracy does is it doesn't protect the minorities, like myself, because I'm always in a minority, right? I mean, but for example, what we're seeing right now is, uh, I saw this on a, um, on the news station not too long ago where there are people in Tennessee who are opposing the Muslims building a mosque in Tennessee and 65 percent they took a vote and 65 percent of the population of this county did not want this mosque built in Tennessee well they went to court and they sued and they said that they tried to stop they put an injunction in there and said that this mosque should not be allowed to be built and the court had the rule that uh, no matter how you vote in this county, no matter how big the majority, we have a democratic republic, which means you have to follow the Constitution. You know, that 
the way the republic works, and I, I hope I'm not insulting your intelligence, but the Constitution is the number one law of the land, it trumps anything below it. So the next thing below it would be the the three federal branches of government, you know, which is then trumps any of the state government laws. So any laws that's passed on a federal basis trumps any state law. And any state law will then trump, and will they have the state constitutions then, and then the state governments and then the local governments. So you can't pass a local law that is in opposition to anything above you, including the U.S. Constitution. That's called the republic system. And the thing is, people don't understand that. They think that there is direct democracy. Now, if you think about it, what will happen if we did have direct democracy like that? As soon as somebody got in the majority, they could just outlaw the minority. You know, there would be that's called a dictatorship. It might be a dictatorship of the majority, and so you call it a democracy. But it's still a dictatorship because it takes away the rights of individuals in the minority to, and to ever have any rights from there on in. Now, let's let's relate this to what's going on right now in the Middle East. <laughs> well, believe it or not, there are are constituencies and even mandates for some of these dictators. That's the thing you don't understand is, uh, you know, they may be bad people and they may be not allowing the minorities to have any rights whatsoever, but that's kind of the kind of government they have. Or they might even be in the minority and not allow the majority any rights whatsoever, but they at some point took control because they had some sort of a mandate. And at that point in time, they got rid of the minorities. They said the minorities no longer have a right to speak up. That's called a dictatorship. Now, we're going into this situation here right now in Libya, for example, and believe it or not, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but Gaddafi has a constituency. He may even have a mandate, and we're finding that out. You know, that he's going into this war and he has a bunch of people fighting on his side, and they have all the weapons, by the way, most of the weapons. And the people that are the rebels, they are maybe a minority of that country. They could be, or even if they're even an equal number, they don't have the weapons. But you got to wonder about that. Who is the constituency that backs Gaddafi? He, my point, I guess I'm making, is even bad leaders have something of a mandate. Even dictators have something of a mandate. Which only proves one thing to me, that sometimes the majority is wrong. A um, good example, again, of the majority being wrong is Adolf Hitler was elected Chancellor of Germany in 1936. <laughs> See what happened there? He immediately turned around, since he had the majority, and outlawed the minority. They, it was, he's, that was democracy. See? So democracy isn't, direct democracy isn't always the best system. The, the way we set it up in the United States, the way they originally set it up at the Founding Fathers was a good idea. It's called, it's called the Republic, and we think that that's a good way to do things. Now, let's talk more about being in the minority a little bit. See, I seem to speak about information and people disagree with me, and I don't know if I have any say whatsoever in this country anymore. Now, I'm sitting in, in the corner of Ohio, and I, I've got no cons people in the control of the government that I can see that agree with me. There's nobody. I, I, when, when Obama was elected, I, 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 I campaigned for Obama. <clears throat> when Obama was elected, I thought, well, maybe I have some voice. But look, Obama's turned around and completely turned into one of the internationalists. He's now attacking a country that never attacked us. So I have no voice in this government. It's kind of sad. And I know a lot of people are talking right now about how they're trying to destroy the unions. And, well, but this is an ongoing process. It's been going on for a long time. The Midwest, especially, especially we're suffering here. And we're suffering from 
a continual long-term disinvestiture of our area. There's no money whatsoever in the world coming into the Midwest anymore. I don't think I don't see any corporations, I don't see any international money, any local money being invested in the Midwest. It's the last place on earth they seem to be investing any money into. It's right here in the Midwest. This might be a reaction, a long, you know, it's a long-term reaction to the fact that this was the center of unions uh, some time ago. And people don't understand that without the threat of unions and without the threat of strikes and, and collective bargaining and so forth, certain short, uh, very small numbers of people will be able to just give you and hand you whatever working standards that they're going to decide you are going to get. You know, the next thing to go after these after they destroy the unions, and you watch if the if the Republicans remain in power too, the next thing to go is going to be minimum wage. You know, and so oh, because if you remember, that was one of the big things Ronald Reagan wanted to get rid of was minimum wage. <sighs> We're getting into trouble here. And don't forget that before the unions came along, there was a seven day work week. Am I exaggerating? There was an 80 hour work week, and if you got sick on the job and you couldn't work, you would be taken outside the factory and thrown outside the gate. You were fired, and they'd just bring in another person. And then people were making like a dollar a day back in those days. I mean, what, what would amount in today's money to be something like $5 a day? And you had to live on that, you had to raise your family on that. It, it was ridiculous. The only reason. And, 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 you know, they, there's a lot of people on the right who will tell you, oh, we love those millionaires. They're the ones who provide all the jobs. You ever see anybody but a you know, boss and a millionaire provide the job? By the way, they haven't around here lately. Well, you know, the jobs may be provided by these people originally, but the pay and the standard of living, the 40-hour the work week, the sick pay, the vacations, the the unemployment compensation, the minimum wage, uh, all of these things were torn out of their hands by pitched battles in the street. This is something that they don't even cover hardly in history anymore. But my own grandmother told me very much about the stories about when she and her fellow union people had to fight in the street and, and how things came to blows very often in, in the the people in the charge of the factories never gave them anything. Everything was taken by collective. Then once as soon as, here's the thing that really irritates me about this. Once World War II was over, the United States with their big military, they never really geared their military down all the way. With their big military, they began to go out into the world and fight communism and fight to make the world safe for democracy, as they say. But what they're really doing is making the world safe for capitalism. And as soon as the, the international corporations, the big money people, understood that it was safe to go into countries like China and India and Brazil and, and Mexico without having the countries uh, take their all their assets, as soon as they felt safe about moving into those areas, they did. They immediately moved into these places where they can pay people one-tenth of what they pay them in the United States. And they're now moving all their corporations, all the heads of their corporations, offshore out of the United States. They say it's because of taxes. Well, what what's going on around here? You know, it, it, I'll tell you what. the We have sold our government to these corporations. They... The, the government has not done a thing to stop either the capital flow out of the United States or the, the patents that they have taken out of the United States. The United States government under the Republicans have never stopped them from taking and destroying America. I, I don't even know who the Republicans even represent anymore. That, that's the point. So, all right, so I said it.